Okay, so this is going to be the latest installment of the movie log. And I think I'm going to just do them all in one shot. Because I, since the last movie log that I um, uploaded, I've seen about five films. Both in the theaters and now for a new thing for me, I'm starting to watch late, late um, new releases online. And so far I use iTunes. You could probably use other services, but I'm really comfortable with iTunes, so I use that. And that is where I saw the uh, the first film I'm going to talk about here, Arbitrage, which is out right now. Richard Gere is starring in the film. There's a few other actors that are, are known, but he's the, the uh, lead character and the big dog in the film. Pretty good, and I saw that on iTunes. It's still in the theaters right now. So that was cool that I was able to... When I looked at iTunes, I saw it listed there on the available movies, and it was a film that I was planning to see for a while, but the timing wasn't right. You know, it's always either something else up, or I just didn't feel like waiting till the film uh, started. So I never really found a good time to see it, but you know, I got the opportunity to see it at home, and you know, I kind of enjoyed the experience. You have more control over the uh, over the viewing of the film. You know, you can stop it, rewind it, whatever you want to do, where at the theater, you know, there's something good about seeing films in the theater on the big screen, but, um, you know, for the convenience alone, it's something to definitely take advantage of, and it was actually a good film, it, you know, when you see the previews of Arbitrage, um, you think you've seen basically everything you need to see in the film and maybe you're only seeing it for the performances but there's a little twist there on the uh, issue as presented in the trailer you see that if you see the trailer you know what the movie's about but there's a little twist there that really really makes it interesting to me and was something that was kind of unexpected so I think it's worth seeing uh, the next movie is Liberal Arts and I saw Liberal Arts and Liberal Arts is, I think is still playing in the theaters nationwide right now and I saw that um, basically because I'm a member of the Philadelphia Film Society and they had a free viewing of the film. But the thing, thing is, normally the free viewing sometimes is a week, several weeks before the movie actually hits the theater. But it was like liberal arts, I think, premiered that week. You know, Sometimes I think, you know, I might be exaggerating. Sometimes it's in close proximity, but sometimes it can be a month early. Uh, that Clint Eastwood movie... Um, the Curve, I forget what the name of it is, let me see if I can find it, Trouble with the Curve, uh, that film, I think, um, after I saw it, it premiered like a month later, you know, uh, Liberal Arts is kind of interesting, you know, the young guy, I mean, well, not young guy, but he is young, I mean, he's in the 30s, the girl's like 19, and, um, it's sort of a romance, but not really, um, it's, it was kind of, it was interesting. It's not a movie that I would have paid to see. But the fact that I was able to see it for free in a screening, um, I enjoyed it. I mean, just like the other film, Trouble with the Curve, it's not a movie that I would have paid to see. But because it was part of a screening, I went to see it. And I actually enjoyed it a little bit. It was funny. It was very interesting. There's, I mean, if you've been in the college environment, there's certain things in the film that you can definitely relate to. Especially as a male, I think. I think it's more geared to men, but I think women will also find things of interest in the film, too. Uh, now, I'm just go over the dates here. Um, Arbitrage, I saw that on September 25th. Uh, Liberal Arts, I saw September 26th, the next day. Next film I have here. Now, this is really interesting. The next film I'm going into here is on the New York Film Festival. And I did a video where I talked about the films that I picked the view of the film festival. Well, the festival is starting, and I think it's over on the 14th, um, which is Sunday. I'm going tomorrow, uh, Saturday the 13th, for two more films. So far, I've seen two films at the New York Film Festival, and, you know, it's right in Manhattan at Lincoln Center. And, you know, one thing I like about going to films in New York is everything is really accessible. It's really easy to get around the city either by walking or by hopping on the subway. The subway is very easy to digest in New York. It's very easy. And um, and I've used I've walked and used the subway to get from 
the train station, the Lincoln Center. And uh, it's been, that's been smooth. Uh, the the uh, venue is um, a little different than what I'm used to. I mean, it's more like a venue for uh, like a play or or a, a major perf uh, like uh, I don't know what, how do you say it performance on stage. I can see. I mean, it, it works for film too, but it's so large and it's so I don't know what the word to use cavernous. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's just so amazing. And, you know, you don't have... There's a sign seating. You know, on my ticket, I have I have a seat. You know, it's not the most comfortable environment for me from a film standpoint. But I enjoy getting the opportunity to see the films. Another thing interesting is that the films that I've chosen to see at the New York Film Festival, a couple of them, well, half of them, are now available at the Philadelphia Film Festival. So I could have, you know, saved my money and just saw them here in my in my home city. But, you know, now I have the experience of um, going to New York and seeing films there. Once once you experience something, then it's, you know, it's easy to go back to it. You know, it's not new anymore. So now it's something familiar. So that is something that's really... Um, the films that I've saw so far, it's all two... First one I'm going to talk about here is Barbara, which I saw on September, excuse me, um, Saturday, October 6th, and that's a German film, and it takes place in East Germany in the 80s. Uh, pretty good. It's kind of slow, though. I mean, it was a pretty much, a, it was a very crowded house, too. I think the director was there. I came in kind of late. Now, the first day getting to Lincoln Center, I didn't know where anything was, plus, you know, the train broke down, so it took me forever to get there, so it was, I really just ran in there while, the, um, while they were introducing the film, so I didn't miss any of the film, but it was kind of awkward, and it was pretty crowded, um, I would say it was 90% full, it wasn't, it wasn't sold out, it might have been sold out on paper, but there was empty seats there, uh, so, but it was probably 90% full. I think that was the first showing of the film, I'm assuming. So a lot of people did show up, and the director was there, so that also um, creates additional interest. But, um, yeah, you know, the film, it is, and that film is going to be showing at the Philadelphia Film Festival. It was good, but slow. Is it worth seeing? Yes. And I think I had these on my last video for the New York Film Festival, I think I did post a link for Barbara, so if you want to look at the, and that's why I saw that, I saw the, the, um, now that's one thing I do want to mention, when I saw the trailer, I thought the film was going to be more like a, a, an espionage type thing, I don't know, maybe I just, you know, drew the wrong conclusion, I definitely did, because I saw the film, it just wasn't like that, but it was still pretty good, um, next one, now this, Something in the Air, which I think is a Belgian production, but it uh, the characters are French uh, characters. And when I met, first talked about this film, I said it was related to May 68. And it's in the spirit, and that's what it says in the caption for the film, it's in the spirit of May 68. The film actually takes place in the 70s. But, uh, you know, you still get that feel of um, of the, old, the unrest in May 68. And apparently... There was still a lot of student movements happening in France during that time period, many years after '68 was in the, you know, rearview mirror. And it's just uh, the film really touches on politics, the arts. Um, it's the period piece of that time period that we had in the early '70s, where you still had that kind of late '60s revolt going on. Uh, you know, you have young people. I mean, I think this is a film that a lot of people, a lot of different generations could relate to. People that were young during that time period and also people that are young today and see themselves in those characters. I really felt that this film, and again it's called in English, Something in the Air, was so good. And again, like I mentioned previously, I like that whole cinematic May 68 thing that this film was inspired by. And I think they say it was kind of semi-autobiographical for the director. I'm sure it was embellished in a lot of ways. You know, the characters, I didn't really like that much.
much. That's a, that's an interesting thing. Sometimes you see a film and you don't like the characters, and for that reason, you don't like the movie. Although I didn't really like the characters, the film itself was so strong. I thought it went on a little too long. It felt long. I think it's a standard. The the time is pretty standard for a feature film, but it felt long. But it was still very strong of a film. And the kind of film that I want to own. So when this becomes available digitally or physically, I'm going to probably get a copy of it. Because I liked that time period so much. And I thought the film was really well done. And I also, this film is also coming to the Philadelphia Film Festival. So I'm also going to see it there again. Uh, so yeah, it just was really a really good film. And um, one of the best films I've seen this year, I mean, Two films I've seen this year are the best, Something in the Air, and the Spike Lee movie, Red Hook Summer. Those are my two favorite films. And what I do when I find two films in a similar time period, a time frame, I look for directors. Now, hopefully, Something in the Air will get a wide enough release. Um, I said directors. I meant um, film reviewers who like both of those films. And what that does, is that gives me a a person that I can look for to find new and interesting films that maybe I wouldn't miss, but I can get in video or download. Because, you know, I can look at these particular um, film reviewers and I know that they're on the kind of similar wavelength that I am on. So, those are films I'm going to be definitely using. Red Hook Summer and Something in the Air. I, I would imagine Something in the Air is going to get a wider release and maybe later in 2000, 2013 will probably be released in theaters. I couldn't imagine that it wouldn't be. I think it has everything in there. It has sex, it has, it has uh, action, it has politics, it has young people, it has everything. Uh, you know, so I think it would really appeal. It has arts. I mean, it really just touches cinema. It touches on so much. That, um, I think uh, it really would inspire a lot of people. I thought the characters in the film were a little bit young on the young side. I think they could have been a little older. You know, maybe college age, they were like high school age, and it was kind of, you know, a little weird. I mean, you know, for the adult subject matter, I mean, it was a really adult uh, political situation. It's kind of unusual for high school kids to be involved in, but I guess that was just a, the time period. And that was the kind of things that were happening in Europe, you know, even with young characters. And at no point did you ever feel that the characters were young. You know, even when they were dealing with people that were obviously older, they were dealing with them in an in, on like an even playing field, which is kind of interesting. So, if you get a chance to see something in the air, either in the theater, hopefully it will be give a wide release, or in any other venue, get a chance, go go see it. It's a great film. Um, last film I want to talk about is a film I saw today. This is very immediate. Normally I don't talk about something I've seen immediate, but I'm lumping it in with all these films I've seen over this time period of about a month. Uh, uh, Gerhard Richter painting, a uh, German painter, who, this is also a good film because I was so inspired that I did a little um, artwork myself, which I won't be sharing here. <laughs> I did that myself using digital tools that I have on my phone. You know, I have a uh, what is it called? Um, what's that popular iPhone? Uh, brushes. I used that and I made some. Because I'm very inspired by the way he draws. I mean, I, now the thing about this film, which was great that I was able to see it in this venue. And I also saw it home using iTunes again. It's the second film I used iTunes with. But the thing that was really great about this is that um, I would not have had the opportunity to see this film if it wasn't for iTunes. When it was scheduled to be released in Philadelphia, the theater that it was going to be shown in, there was a mishap with the air conditioning. So for a month, they closed so they can get the air conditioning fixed. And um, during that time period, they had a lot of movies that were on schedule to be shown. The only film they brought back was Cat in Paris, which I saw after the the uh, air conditioning was back up and I talked about that in previous videos so you know I missed it totally missed it. I was hoping that they were going to bring back some of the films that they had on schedule but they didn't uh, 
So I thought I'd just, you know, oh, there it is, it's gone. But then, you know, flipping through iTunes, the movie section, I happened to see it. So I said, oh, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to watch this. So I watched it today, and I'm probably going to watch it again because I still have it for 24 hours. Really good film. You know, it's a simple documentary. It just shows him at work and doing things. It also gives you a little, very little about his history, not a lot. It's just him as a working artist and what that life is like. Um, and um, it was in just for the fact that I was inspired to do a little work shows that the film has amazing value and again it's available right now on iTunes so this is a film that will get limited re limited release in most places I remember before it was scheduled to be in Philadelphia they had a long uh, at the um, what was it Walter Reed Theater no it's not Walter Reed I forget the film forum I think it was at the New York Film Forum for a month or so and I was planning on going to see it there but then when I heard it's going to come to Philly, I said, I'll see it there. But then I lost the opportunity because of the issue I talked about previously. But I did get to see it, and it's a good film uh, just for the inspiration if you're interested in art and maybe even creating art. And anybody can be an artist. Anybody. Whether you're good or bad, it's, that's uh, debatable. But just creating is something that anybody can do. And, um, and enjoy the process of creating you know, that in and of itself is worth it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's something that um, is worth seeing. Okay, peace.